In this video, we're going to be reviewing the phylum Mollusca. The phylum Mollusca gets its name from the Latin word for soft. And while they're very diverse in their body shapes, they all share a soft body, although some of them have a hard shell around that body. Examples of the phylum Mollusca include the snails, slugs, clams, octopus, squid, chitons, and even other forms like the nautilus and cuttlefish. The phylum Mollusca is extremely diverse. While there isn't a typical mollusk, most share a shell, all share a mantle, gills, a foot, many have a radula, and many have a head. The shell produced by many mollusks is made of calcium carbonate. This hard exterior surface helps protect them from the predators, the environment, and parasites. The mantle is a layer of tissue that secretes the shell in the snails and clams. In the octopus and the squid, it forms the main part of the body that looks like a tube. Here are two images showing the mantle in a diagram form on the right, which is yellow, and then you can see in the lower left the beautifully colored mantle of the giant clam that is found in tropical regions. Feathery gills are an important respiratory structure in the mollusks. Here you can see the feathery gills in a clam, and then here are the feathery gills found in squid and octopus. Many mollusks also have a foot. This fleshy structure is important for locomotion. The radula is a tooth-like structure that many mollusks have, and it's used for scraping food off of different surfaces. The rough texture is able to scrape effectively. Many mollusks have a head, and these heads can come with eyes, eye spots, or even tentacles. In terms of ecological roles, they fill many different niches. Some are herbivores, predators, scavengers, or even filter feeders. In terms of habitats, they're found on terrestrial as well as aquatic environments, both marine and freshwater. Mollusks are actually a group of highly evolved invertebrates that show many advanced features and even some advanced evolution in which they have lost some features. In terms of segmentation, they're so highly evolved that they've lost their segments and now have highly modified bodies. They have a true body cavity and are therefore coelomates and they have both tissues and organs. Some can be very complex, like you see in the diagram to the right. In terms of body symmetry, they are bilaterally symmetrical, and many groups have a specific head region, and therefore have cephalization. Here's a diagram showing the wide variety of body forms that can be found in the different mollusk classes. The class Gastropoda gets its name meaning belly foot, and these are the snails that literally do crawl around on their belly. The Gastropoda include the snails, slugs, and nudibranchs. Many species of gastropod have one shell. It's a coiled shell like you can see in the snails in the picture below, and it also can be reduced or lost. In the upper right is a nudibranch, an aquatic marine form, and it has completely lost its shell, while in the lower left you have a slug that has a reduced shell. In terms of a foot, they have a very large foot that's used for locomotion around in the environment. They all share a radula, which rhythmically scrapes their environment in order to get different types of food, such as algae or leaves and their heads have tentacles with eye spots. One unique, unusual aspect of the gastropoda is the feature called torsion. This is a bending of the digestive tract so that the mouth and the anus are both located near the head, which is highly unusual. 
Why would this evolve? Well, the benefit is that it allows for most of the body to be able to be withdrawn into the shell for protection, but yet maintain the ability to ingest food and excrete waste. A second class is called the polyplacophora, meaning many plates, and these are the chitons that are found in marine environments. The polyplacophora have eight plates in their shell. The mantle is pressed onto the rock and used for protection, and the foot also helps to pull the different plates down, creating a hard surface that leaves them impenetrable to most predators and parasites. The bivalvia is a third class of the mollusks, and they get their name from the fact that they are two-valved or have two shells. The bivalvia include the clams, scallops, and mussels. They have two shells, and their mantle has been highly modified and now forms extensions called siphons that are essential for filter feeding. If you look at the picture in the middle right, you can see a clam with one of its siphons extended from the shell. One siphon forms the in-current siphon that takes in water and food, and the X-current excretes waste and the water. The foot is large and often used in burrowing, and the head is reduced and completely lost. Here's an example from the class bivalvia, the disco clam. The disco clam has a unique ability to send off light signals into the environment. The final class of mollusk that we're going to review today are the cephalopoda. The cephalopoda include the squid, octopus, and cuttlefish. And they get their name from the fact that they're mostly a head and a foot. The shell of the cephalopoda has either been lost completely or reduced to an internal pen, but you still can find an external shell in the nautilus that you see in the middle right. The mantle is modified so that it can fill and contract with water, creating a form of jet propulsion that moves them through the environment. Here you can see the cephalopode's amazing ability to change not only shape, but color as well as texture in the environment. Here's another example of an octopus changing not only color and shape, but texture to camouflage on a coral reef. And here, yet again, we can see the changing shape, color, and texture of an octopus camouflaging itself on a chunk of coral with algae. Color-changing squid, cuttlefish, and octopus are the stars of this famous TED Talk by David Gallo. Another aspect of the cephalopoda is that their radula has become highly modified to form a beak. You can see the large beak of the giant squid that are often found in the sperm whale stomachs in this person's hand and the diagram in the lower left. The head now is large, contains eyes and tentacles that surround a mouth and includes a large brain. One aspect of cephalopoda anatomy is the fact that they have a closed circulatory system. So why did that closed circulatory system evolve? Well, for one, they need a very efficient delivery of oxygen to the body. While most other mollusks are slow or sedentary, not moving at all, they have very fast movement. So a closed circulatory system allows them a more effective oxygen delivery system so that oxygen can get to their muscles. The unique abilities of the cephalopoda, from high problem solving and high intelligence to their changing colors, textures, and shape, have made them the stars of many videos found throughout the internet. The phylum mollusca is extremely important to research and has many beneficial uses for humans. One, the fact that they're filter feeders means that they have the ability to clean water, even polluted water. They're an important food item for humans, like the plate of clams in the lower left. And they're a source of pearls. 
Pearls are actually just a layer of shell secreted by the mantle to encapsulate irritants that get trapped between the mantle and the shell. While naturally this would form if sand were there in irritating the clam or mussel, humans have figured out how to put small little plastic beads between the mantle and the shell and allow over time the mollusk to produce the small layer of pearl. In terms of research for medical uses, cone snails have proven to have a very powerful group of toxins that have been, can be used for humans as painkillers. In conclusion, the phylum mollusca is extremely diverse, living in many different environments, fulfilling many different ecological niches, and having a wide variety of behaviors.